Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 18 of the chapter States of Matter. Today I have planned to do four little subtopics with you. The topics that I will be covering in this video are density and molar mass of a gas based on the ideal gas equation, Dalton's law of partial pressures, aqueous tension and partial pressure in terms of mole fraction. Without wasting any time, let's start with the first uh, topic. Density and molar mass of a gas. We know that the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT. When we try to introduce the or write the ideal gas equation in terms of density, we need to uh, change number of moles to what it stands for. What is number of moles? It is mass of the gas divided by the molar mass of the gas. Whatever the gas is, whatever quantity you have, if you divide that mass by the molar mass, you will get the number of moles. So once we do that, it is possible to get an expression for number of moles and density. So if we write PV, number of moles can be written as mass upon molar mass RT where R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin scale, P is pressure and V is the volume. We've already studied that. Now, if we rearrange this, we get, let us take M here. So M comes to the other side. M, I'm taking it up here and I'm leaving everything else on this side. So on this side, I have small m, R, T and let me keep P here too for the time being. And I'm bringing V down here. So when I bring V down here, mass over volume is density. So I get PM is equal to density R T. Now if I bring P down here, I'll get molar mass is equal to DRT upon P. Now, this expression is commonly used in numerical problems to calculate the molar mass from the ideal gas equation. Similarly, if I had to rearrange this, I would get, and I want D, that I'll take everything else on the other side. And if I had to calculate the density from the ideal gas equation, then we would just rearrange this and write then what would density be equal to? Density would be equal to, we'll keep D on this side and we'll take everything else on the other side. So what do we have on the other side? We have M and P goes up. So MP upon and RT come down. So RT. So this is the expression of density that you get from the ideal gas equation. So using the ideal gas equation, if you have to calculate the number of mole, sorry, the molar mass, you use this equation and if you have to find out the density you use this equation that was point one we now come to the second point that i wish to discuss and that is dalton's law of partial pressures john dalton in 1801 said that the total uh, pressure exerted by a mixture of non-reactive gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of each gas now what does this mean if you have, let us say, a mixture of two gases in a gas jar and these two gases do not react with each other to form a product, then they would behave as if they were individual gases in a jar. Whatever pressure gas A would have exerted, it still exerts the same pressure and when you add gas B to it, gas B exerts its own pressure and the total pressure is a sum of these two pressures. Let's take an example. We have, uh, let us say, we are creating music. A recording of a song is going on. So what do we have? We have different instruments. The different instruments are playing their own, like you have a guitar, you have a pianist, you have a violinist, you have a drummer, you have a singer. Each one is, uh, is playing his own instrument. But all of them get together and then it results in the formation of that song. All of them would together. So, so the song has how many sounds? Is it 
Is any sound uh, subduing the other sound? Is any sound dominating the other sound? Whatever sound each instrument has, it keeps on playing its own sound and it contributes, it has its own contribution and it is not affected by the other sounds. <coughs> so it is somewhat like that. These different sounds are different. They do not mix. They do not produce the same sound. They do not react with each other. So it is like when you have different gases which do not react with each other, each one is producing its own pressure. Each one is exerting its own pressure. Therefore, the sum total would be the pressure of the individual gases. Right? It would be the sum of the individual gases. So let us say that you have uh, the pressure P total would be equal to the partial pressures of different gases. Let us say we had gas 1 has pressure P1, the partial pressure of gas 2 is P2, the partial pressure of gas 3 is P3 and so on. So the P total would be the sum of the partial pressures of all the gases that are present in that jar. Now why is this important? Why should we know this? When scientists carry out chemical reactions, we find that usually they, uh, when they get the uh, gaseous products, these gases are not the only gases present in the jar. Let us say that there is a reaction which is going on in water because most of the reactions they take place in aqueous medium. So you have a gas jar which is inverted and the reaction is taking place inside the liquid and when the reaction takes place gas is produced and this gas let us say is collected in this gas jar now it is not possible to know the molar mass or the number of moles in order to calculate that we should know the partial pressures or the pressure of the gas but what will happen here? Will you have only the gas that, that uh, was produced as a result of the reaction? And since the, uh, the medium was aqueous, you would have some water vapor in the jar too. Because at every temperature, when you take water, some of the molecules of water would have enough energy to escape in the form of water vapor from the surface of the liquid. So these molecules of water vapor would also be present in the gas jar. So the pressure that you would calculate would not actually be the pressure of the gas that was produced as a result of that chemical reaction. So what should you do? Whenever you are trying to find out the pressure of the gas, you would be interested only in the pressure of the gas and not the pressure which is being exerted by the water vapor present inside the jar. That is where Dalton's law of partial pressures comes into play. This water vapor which is present, it is at any temperature. You know, at all temperatures, some molecules of water, they escape as water vapor. And if you had water in a jar, in a sealed jar, the at any temperature, the molecules of water vapor would be fixed and therefore the pressure in that volume would be fixed. This pressure at different temperatures of water, of the water vapor, is known as our next topic, that is aqueous tension. So what is aqueous tension? Aqueous tension is the pressure exerted by water vapor when at different temperatures. So when we, for a certain volume, that is the jar should have a certain volume in which the aqueous tension would be, uh, the pressure of water vapor would be fixed for a certain temperature. So when you have the product of, a, of the reaction mixture or the gas that was produced and water vapor, what would the pressure of the dry gas be like? You are interested in the pressure of the dry gas. That is only the gas which does not have water vapor. So pressure of dry gas would be, let us now, what is present here? You have the pressure of dry gas, that is the product, and you have the pressure of water vapor, H2O vapors. So, which is aqueous tension. So pressure of dry gas would be, this is total pressure, it would be P total minus the aqueous tension. 
it would be p total minus aqueous tension. So you can refer to a table which would be given in numerical problems where the aqueous tension would be given to you. So you would use that value, calculate P total, subtract the aqueous tension from it to get the pressure of the dry gas in your problems. Now that we have studied about the Dalton's law of partial pressures and we have understood that the total pressure of a mixture of ideal gases is the sum of the partial pressures of all the gases, let us take that discussion further and now discuss the fourth part that is partial pressure in terms of mole fraction. We know PV is equal to nRT, so the expression for pressure would be equal to P would be equal to nRT upon V, right? This is the common expression that we get. Now, if we had three gases, their pressures would be P1, P2 and P3. Let us assume that all the three gases are present at the same temperature and, occupying, and are occupying the same volume. Why? Because we've taken a mixture of these three in one jar. So if we take a mixture of three gases in a jar, the volume is fixed and all of them are together at the same temperature. So temperature and volume are fixed. So T and V are fixed. R is already a constant. So for the different gases, what would vary? The variables would be pressure and number of moles. So for the three gases, we could say, what would P1 be? P1 would be equal to N1 RT upon V. P2 would be equal to N2 RT upon V. And P3 would be equal to N3 RT upon V, right? The three, the partial pressures of each are calling, since all of them are ideal gases, P1 would be equal to N1 RT upon V, P2 would be equal to N2 RT upon V, and P3 would be N3 RT upon V. Now, according to Dalton's law of partial pressures, the P total, that is the sum of all three, um, the, uh, the total pressure should be the sum of these three. So P total is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3. So let us put the values. So it means P total is equal to N1RT upon V plus N2RT upon V plus N3RT upon V. Let us take RT upon V which is common outside a bracket. So what have we left with inside the bracket? N1 plus N2 plus N3 RT upon V should be pressure total, right? Now if I take the partial pressure of one of these gases and divide it by P total, what would I get? Let us say P1. P1 upon P total, let us calculate what would it be and put their values. What is P1? P1 is N1, let me take the RT upon V outside the bracket, RT upon V, right? Divided by P total is N1 plus N2 plus N3 and it's inside the bracket and outside what will I have? Into RT upon V. Since it's in the denominator, the RT and V go up. So what do I get? V, V, RT, RT are cancelled. What am I left with? This is the mole fraction. The number of moles of one gas in a mixture of uh, gases. The number of moles of one gas divided by the total number of moles of all the gases would give you the mole fraction of the gas, right? Which is given as X. So P... 1 upon p total would be equal to x1 mole fraction of gas 1 or we could say that p1 is actually equal to x1 into p total the partial pressure is the of a gas is the mole fraction into the total pressure and similarly, for the other two gases, you could derive the same. P2 would be equal to mole fraction of 2 into P total. And P3 similarly would be equal to X3 into P total. Right? So this is how you can 
find out in terms of mole fraction how can you explain the partial pressure or how can you calculate partial pressure of a gas well so with this we uh, finish the theory part of this in the next video i'm going to solve a few numericals based on these uh, concepts that i've covered now and uh, if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up i'd appreciate that uh, subscribe to my channel recommend the channel to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now